To consider the ancient cataclysm is to consider major disruptions to this planet's evolutionary tale. Evolution is a broken cycle and events like the Great Flood and the Younger Dryads impact events seriously overthrow a common narrative that we are emerging from a primitive state. This is common belief and it must be wrong because of the documentation available in the forms of religious writings that suggest more than anything else in existence that we were technologically advanced on this earth in a previous setting that was disrupted by a cataclysmic event. Whenever we look at Mesoamerica, Egypt or even China for that matter, we are confronted with structures set in stone that were previously beyond our physical capabilities as human beings. And this shows that machine bearing equipment must have been taking the burden of such developments. This also shows a human understanding of advancements that have been completely and utterly lost. Much to our confusion in modern times of these dramatic and in some cases impossible undertakings. It is hard to imagine this setting on this planet that we were a developed culture before this current wave of existence. But it is more of an absurdity than anything else to believe that a primitive people were capable of these things. It is far more plausible to understand a struggle to survive, civilization collapse and fighting back from the brink of extinction. We are the survivors and the trauma in the mind of the cataclysmic soul is a condition of humanity because of this. We collectively and unconsciously remember the trauma inflicted by these events and this is why we are the survivors, the strongest of the ones that were left behind as it were. These ancient monuments and structures that were considered impossible engineering is simply the surviving landmarks of a previous wave of existence. Wait. Do you hear this? The things that remain from this previous wave of existence have been adopted by religious and other cult practices around the world. From these practices that are surviving alongside us, we have the symbol of the Ankh from ancient Egyptian religion that has assimilated into Christianity as the symbol of the cross. Ankh in Egyptian literally means life and this is the symbol for life but the origins of the symbol are strangely unknown. Some scholars attest to the argument that Jesus was not crucified on a cross that stood directly from the ground as was with the case with St. Andrew's cross as being more of an X than a standing pole with a T bar. These researchers are suggesting the crucifixion of Christ may have been a similar crucifixion to that of St. Andrew and that the Catholic Church adopted the symbol of the Ankh from Egypt and then associated it with Christ's death. It is an interesting thought with no apparent conclusion, but the origin of the symbol is lost in history. Some have suggested it is nothing but a sandal strap, where others are adamant it holds the key to our understanding of the past and represents a key to the realm of the Akashic, accessed by extreme meditation in an astral setting. Another mystery of the ancient things is that of the ostrich egg, believe it or not. The ancient characteristics regarding the development of artistic ways of remembering have long been a mystery to experts studying trade and production of the egg that stretches back 6,000 years into the past. Before the Santorini event brought about the Bronze Age collapse, these eggs were highly sought after in the Mediterranean region to such a degree that Fabergé eggs were later created to replicate these very mysterious things and now a team at the University of Bristol think they may have solved the ancient mystery. Examining ostrich eggs from the British Museum's collection, the team were able to reveal secrets about their origin and how and where they were made. Using state-of-the-art scanning electronic microscopy, Dr. Carolyn Cartwright Senior scientists at the British Museum was able to investigate the egg's chemical makeup to pinpoint their origins and study microscopic markers that reveal how they were made. In this study, published in the journal Antiquity, the researchers described for the first time the surprisingly complex system behind ostrich egg production. This includes evidence about where the ostrich eggs were sourced, if the ostriches were captive or wild, and how the manufactured methods can be related to techniques and materials used by artisans in specific areas. The team leader was quoted as saying that the entire system of decorated ostrich egg production was much more complicated than we had imagined. We also found evidence to suggest the ancient world was much more interconnected than previously thought. 
Mediterranean ostriches were indigenous to the eastern Mediterranean and North Africa. Using a variety of isotopic indicators, we were able to distinguish eggs laid in different climatic. What was most surprising to us was the eggs from both zones were found at sites in the other zone, suggestive of more extensive trade routes. The team leader known as Dr. Hodis and other colleagues believe eggs were taken from wild birds' nest, despite evidence of ostriches being kept in captivity during this time. This was no ordinary egg hunt. Ostriches can be extremely dangerous, so there was a tremendous risk involved in taking eggs from wild birds. We also found eggs require time to dry before the shell can be carved and therefore require safe storage. This has economic implications since storage necessitates a long-term investment and this, combined with the risk involved, would add to the egg's luxury value. We are assessing not only how ancient luxuries were produced but also how they were used by different peoples. These questions are incredibly important for our own society today in which the same object may have different social and symbolic meanings for different groups. Such knowledge and understanding helps foster tolerance and mutual respect in a multicultural society. If we can understand these mechanisms in the past for which we have long-term outcomes in terms of social development, we can use this knowledge to better inform our society in a number of ways about the ancient past and indeed the re-emergence of our people after cataclysmic occurrences. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.